Hey guys, this is Jan Weigang and this is the shortest possible um, overview over my macro keyboard in 10 minutes or less, I hope. So first things first, how does it work? It's a K55 keyboard from Corsair, which is the cheapest one that works with their IQ software. The IQ software lets you uh, reprogram every key on this keyboard to something different. And it actually doesn't use the hotkeys yet. Um, I programmed it so that it presses F24 and then the key that you press and then auto hotkey detects the F24 and translate it into whatever you want. So you can use auto hotkey macros or you can just use shortcuts that you could possibly press on the other keyboard, on, on the main keyboard, but there are that are just too far apart or that you would have to use two hands or that use the F13 to F23 buttons. So stuff that you wouldn't want to press. Um, so basically there's um, a few different blocks. There's the dynamics, the bars, the formatting and the engraving. And uh, the dynamics and engraving and all of the text styles have a second functionality, which means that you can use shift to uh, make them produce a different shortcut. And all of the shift, control and all do work. So let's uh, try this. You can enter like the dynamics here. You can select this with shift. Uh, do the hairpin, let's do this. Um, the second functionality, for instance, of the hairpins is to make the, uh, the dynamics one step louder um, or the opposite. Um, there's like um, the plugin that enters the current, whoops, sorry, passage selection, yeah, uh, enters the current dynamic in brackets uh, for new entrances or new pages or whatever. Um, there is um, trills and the shake vibrato. I mainly you do jazz and funk stuff. Um, and uh, I, that's why also there's Ford piano, um, which I use more often than Sforzando, which is on the secondary function. And the octave lines are here as well. Um, that's the first block done. The second one is about the bars. So you can add. Um, add uh, bars and steps of 8 to the end of the score. You can insert them into the score with that above here. Um, let's insert a system bar line here. Uh, if you have the system bar line and you do this with your mouse and add a single bar, it's gonna add the bar to the other side of the bar line, which you probably didn't want to happen. Y you can um, insert one before this. Um, you can add a pickup bar obvious what it does. Don't have uh, to have the plugin that deletes pickup bars anymore as Sibelius by now finally can do this on its own. And you can uh, delete leading bars, um, you can delete staves, delete a special bar line, mean, uh, special means system stuff is being moved instead of deleted and delete bars in itself and change the bar numbers. Um, let's say we have the pianist playing slashes here. There you go. And uh, the trumpet player plays this and then he has to play the slashes. So let's copy this with Control C. We can paste this into um, the piano as a cue, which is usually um, like Control Alt Shift and V or something. And uh, in the trumpet part uh, in the piano part, you can see that it has the cue now. Um, we can also paste this as a rhythm notation. The Guitar, sadly, is a transposing instrument, but for all the other instruments, it actually puts them on the right bar line because it detects the clef, but not the transposal of the jazz guitar. And uh, you can add this as kicks over time as well. In choral music mainly, uh, I have to use this a lot. Uh, if you split the voices and you did it in octaves or did it in some kind of um, chordal fashion and it is in one, in one voice, uh, this button just puts it into two voices. And uh, if uh, something weird happens and you wanted to do this again, then you can delete everything from the other voices with that shortcut. Um, let's enter some lyrics like I will kaham and uh, press this button to slur the melismas, which means a kaham now gets a slur. It doesn't look pretty here, but you get the idea. That's pretty much everything about the bars Done. You can copy the, the uh, different values of notes and, um, you know, if you copy this and then paste, uh, you get faster or slower 
notes, which is faster than the Sibelius way of creating a new score and entering it there and stuff. And there's uh, multiple slurs, so if you have something like this and you select every F in here, including the one after the last slur, you can just press this button and it slurs everything. Um, we're gonna screw this up royally. So this is horrible spacing. This is not where it's supposed to be. Let's do it this way. Um, you see the, um, the functionalities here on the last F keys. You can uh, change all the stuff in the articulation that you, you normally don't. Uh, uh, it's a pain to go to in the keypad section. Um, let's do this and this and make this the other way around. So we have two things that we want to do here. Or we can do. The first is we reset everything with the shortcuts being like Control Shift N, Control Shift P or something. Uh, reset the position, reset um, the design maybe, reset uh, the, the node spacing, the um, beaming, and reset the the um, the flip of the beams. Or you can reset everything together, and it just does it for you. Okay, um, the combine button basically does what it says. It combines um, the tied notes into like dotted notes and stuff. Edit instruments, really important if uh, like this happens and you can't easily, sometimes it doesn't easily work like so, can't easily um, press on the instrument again. You can press this, enter what instrument you wanted and it's done. Uh, and the compare button, because uh, I don't know if you know, but if you change these kind of infos here and you're in a part it doesn't only change it for it does only change this for the part and not for everything so with this you can compare the info of all different things that it's the same okay so there's a few things um we can export the the practice tracks which um i is a plugin i did that pans everything to the left and makes it uh, not so loud and then pans one instrument to the right makes it louder and uh, exports it with the name of that instrument added so for choir and um, stuff like that it's nice to have to practice too um, there's actually a plugin that does this in Sibelius rehearsal tracks or something um, export lyrics export MIDI if you want to make real track in FL Studio or another DAW in this export parts export score all self-explanatory um, special bar lines um, here um, the section end, which is really important, and sometimes I want to add a solo for a choir, but I don't want to add another staff. Uh, staff. Um, then I'm going to put the women together in one staff and uh, put the solo in the soprano staff, which means um, I'm going to have to create a section end, so the, um, the instrument names are going to have their full version, uh, and you can read actually that it's a solo there. Stuff like that. Um, this is actually a really important button, be for me at least, because um, when you create the bar line, it selects the bar line, and if you then manually um, select the box system text and enter it, and then let's do this and make this into a system, and then you press enter here, really annoying, it connects to the wrong side of the break. Um, yeah, the plugin does it. Uh, just a different way it selects the first way uh, the first thing in the measure and then it doesn't doesn't do this um, and this is uh, the switches for panorama view for next parts every part is gonna show up here so if you lay out the parts later do this and uh, switching score and parts um, I don't think I've mentioned the engraving rule stuff here um, engraving rules pretty simple um, shift is the parts, um, splitting multi-rest, splitting measures if you want to do a coda or something, um, locking format and with shift unlocking, freezing and with shift unfreezing, um, turning off the magnetic layout and turning it back on again with shift and make two system or with shift make into a page. Okay, so those are obvious as well. Change clef, change the scale, um, change the, the type of measure. Um, and lastly, here's the Basically, this numpad is now the the second layer of my numpad. So I've changed the plus sign on the real numpad on my first keyboard to mean control, which means I don't have this button. I don't have this button, obviously, on the main keyboard. But all of the others 
are the same when I press here as when I press them with plus on my main uh, numpad, which means uh, I only have two layers now, basically. the This layer, which I can also access from the numpad, and uh, the, the usual layer of, of different node values. And um, I think Shift plus still gives me access to the other layers, but this is all of the stuff I need from them. There's just basically all the faults, all the doids, all the repeat bar, glissando, um, arpeggio stuff. It's all there. Um, lastly, if you press this and you do this Apache, whatever, um, and you want to keep entering the um, articulations, you're going to have to press Escape. So I've put Escape on my secondary mouse a button uh, on the side of the mouse so I can get out of this without moving my left hand and still be able to put the articulations in here. Stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is what this thing can do. Last thing, play section, my favorite button of all time. Um, if you do something here, press P to play. It plays from this C that's selected right now. It plays from here. Press the normal space and it keeps playing, not helpful. And uh, press shift space and activate a plugin that searches for the last special bar line, place from that point. So you can hear what you're just working on in context. There's the inspector here and there's some finding stuff to go around the score, finding orphaned uh, objects, finding out of range nodes and uh, the proofreading plugin. Um, yeah. So let me know if you're interested in having these. Um, uh, I want to make these available. I created the buttons or the, the, the icons of it in uh, paint.net and um, I've created the auto hotkey script. This is all in a German keyboard layout. So uh, this, like this shift is going to be longer and enter is going to be different and there's buttons here if you're in North America. Uh, stuff like that. There's um, I've used templates from Terran at Linus Tech Tips, who I got the idea and the technique from to create this second keyboard. Um, I've changed all of this for the German layout, so uh, I've got both uh, layouts in kind of a template form. Um, let me know, and other than that, have fun, and I'll see ya.